article but before i get to that i want to read ask, uh, not very well but i want to ask you guys a question sure uh, we'll go to both of you maybe and say okay what when i say japanese whiskey what do you think of sushi no don't okay so i i think it's good it's unique um that's why you said maybe <laughs> yeah it's good it's unique uh i think it's overhyped and the H statement is going away. Ding, 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 yes. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the H stated Japanese whiskeys today. Hmm. Um, and not, not just the H stated ones, a little bit about Japanese whiskey in general. But, um, you know, the H statements have disappeared, like you said. But I came across this interesting article. We'll pop it up here. We'll put a link as well. Um, and this is about a 55 year old bottle of Yamazaki wow. that Centauri is putting out. Okay. Um, anybody have a guess of how much it costs? I don't know. It's got to be a lot of like money. Fifty-five million dollars. It's actually one million yen, oh, which oh, is a little over it. twenty-seven thousand U.S. Oh dollars. Oh my god! Wow. Only a hundred bottles. Oh, so, so limited this, release. Too. BS. Come on. This kind of flies in the face of mm. hey, age-dated Japanese whiskey is disappearing, but we'll put out a fifty-five-year-old. Yeah. Only like ridiculous. I like it. I like it. And really? limited release. Come on. No. Oh. Terrible. That's a great idea. No, no. You no. are a typical Japanese whiskey <laughs> hype man. Yeah. Seriously. I love good marketing. <laughs> First of all, what do you guys think about that? Just good marketing? Good ploy? It is good marketing. Well, I don't know if it's good. I don't know what the results are if the demand is high for this stuff, but I mean I really like the idea of limited release. I, I, I am calling now, a price point. This is like a super oh, limited. I mean, yeah, this is, that's crazy, but hey, if people are willing to pay for it. Why not? Yeah, I, I'm calling BS on this. I don't think it's true supply and demand. I, I do, I well, do hey, agree. The 55 year, or just in general? Though? In general, oh, okay, in okay. general, including this one. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, yeah, they could have made more bottles. They could have made more bottles. Of course, they, they didn't have to yeah, charge that have. much. No, yeah. no, no, no. Wait, but, but when this you this is age, called an exclusive though. When you dude. age a whiskey for 55 years, you lose so much to evaporation. I understand that you got to, You're paying for the storage of that for 55 years. You're not even 55 years old. Yeah, you're, you're telling me. Value on wait, life? wait, wait! You're telling me 55, 55 years ago. No, wait, wait! You're telling me 55 years ago they were thinking, oh, you know what? We're going to keep this for 55 years, and we're going to charge this much to do this. And we're going to release 100. They want to cover their costs. B. They want to yes. cover their costs. Yeah, they were. No, yeah, no. Were. Uh, you, this is it's my... called planning. No, no, it's no, no. called a business. Well, hang on, plan. hang on. Let's agree on one thing: that Yamazaki. If you guys want to send us a bottle of this, <laughs> yes, we will happily we will review. Gladly. We'd love to try it. <laughs> try and it. We would completely remove this video if you want. No, I think I think the biggest. Issue. The thing that I have a problem with with this is that I, I mean I guess I, I get that there is a supply and demand. I get that the demand has gone up, and I get that there's always going to be some type of limited supply. Yeah. But my my personal like tinfoil hat uh, conspiracy theory is it's not all that. I think what they're trying to do. I think the 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 whiskey industry is trying to switch to a less risky business model. And putting an age statement is actually extremely whiskey. Is actually extremely whiskey. Is actually extremely whiskey. 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 Uh, whiskey. <laughs> risky. It's whiskey business. Risky. It it's a whiskey, whiskey, risky, risky, whiskey. Well, yes. okay. Um, I think well, that a lot of what you're saying we could we could talk about with American whiskey too. Absolutely. It's true. Age statements I, are disappearing. Yeah, and I think I, I, I mean except scotch. I think American companies have realized that yes, like for example, uh, bourbon. The demand for bourbon has gone up. Skyrocketed. And they, and they have to try to figure out like, do we invest now and wait 12 years to yeah. release something? When we don't know what that market That's, could be, and we don't and know then, how this is going to turn right. out, and there's a, there's a lot of unknowns, and and as you know, in business, unknowns are scary things, and it, and it affects a lot of kind of calculations, and therefore, how do you mitigate that risk? And I feel like mitigating risk, regardless of the business, is to in, well, in this case, in in whiskey, is to get rid of that number. Getting rid of that number, I think, is a big they can deal. Be, more. And I and I and I would say sure. I would double down on this is because well, well hang on, because a blend also allows you the latitude to kind of bring other things in to match over time. Right? That's so correct. That's right. And and I think there's a there's a there is a model for that in Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is an extremely you know profitable business. 
they've always been blended. And I think that put them at an advantage in terms of acquiring markets, able to strategically okay. manipulate their supply so, in order to meet the demand. So let's get into some specifics here. I've got a couple of theories mm. I want to run by you guys. And this is, you could you could say these are theories as to why the demand increased. Okay. In, let's call it that. Or in other words, like why there is a shortage, right? Because at some level, they're selling more of it. Right. We know that. We know those numbers are going up. So you would assume that there's a greater demand or there's just better marketing. So let's get into that. So the first um, fact is that in, um, I think it was 2012 or something like that, around there, we'll put the proper date up, Suntory acquired Beam, Beam and Makers, right? All these companies that are kind of together in the Beam family. Um, and that opened up the U.S. conduit for them to start advertising more and distributing more Japanese whiskey through this new, um, new acquisition. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I mean, there was it a definitely lot coincides. Like, if you look at the chart, it, it lines up with that spike in, in sales of Japanese whiskey. Sure. I mean, there was a lot of consolidation. There was a lot of, um, you know, I think the economy was in flux around 2011 or so. And I know that there was a lot of purchasing of different companies. Now, I remember around that time also, there was a lot of conflict between the Japanese parent company and like something like Beam. Because yeah. they were saying... You know, I think the Japanese company came in and said, like, no, this is, this production is not efficient. You could produce, you know, double production if you do it X, Y, Z. And I think the Beam family came back and said, no, this is our traditional way of doing things. Please, like, we need to keep it this way, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I'm sure they came to a compromise, but I remember there was a lot of conflict. Mm -hmm. And that, again, like, kind of gives me this idea that, you know, maybe this is not purely supply and demand. I think it's just a lot of, uh, well, I think so it's the business. That could work, though. That yeah. could work that this is, they now have this marketing branch and this distribution branch to the U.S. Mm. So they just started pushing it more. Mm. And, and it did catch on. We know it caught on because people bought it, right? That's true. Yeah, I mean, this is, dude, this is basic, you know, marketing strategy, right? I mean, when you acquire a business, a lot of times it's to expand your own business and its own outlet. And this is, that's the basic thing. So it's totally understandable why, like, there would be an increase of it in terms of supplies now available. They're able to, you know, get to the appropriate channels and whatnot. So I don't know. You know, I mean, I think it all makes sense. You know, this is great business strategy. Mm. Totally. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys want to hear the second theory that's been floating around us. I'd love to hear this. Really? Have you been curious about it? Yes. All right, so the second one actually involves a TV miniseries, believe it or not, and a love story. Your guys that favorite. doesn't surprise me. So, I mean, I know when I say Japanese TV series, I know what Dylan's thinking about. Does it have tentacles? <laughs> and I know, I think I know what Jules is thinking about, but it's probably neither I, one I of those. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it actually involves a love story of this guy, Masataka Takatsuru, um, he was actually the guy that was sent in 1918. His dad sent him to Scotland to learn how to make scotch. Right. And he's the guy that kind of went there, spent his time there, studied at the university, came back to Japan. He founded Nika in 1934, and the rest is history. But along that way, um, in, the, in the part of that time, he actually, when he was in Scotland, met a Scottish woman. They fell in love. They got married. He brought her back with him to Japan. And that love story is kind of the basis of this TV miniseries that came out, um, I think it was in uh, 2014, 2015. Now, as an inadvertent byproduct of that, it was very or... popular well, it was very popular among Japanese housewives. Mm. And they unexpected, I mean, unexpected to the world, they started to go out and buy Nika whiskey and other Japanese whiskeys because they got so interested in it from watching this miniseries. So what it ended up doing is creating a bigger demand in Japan. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, or, what, or was breath. that unexpected? I don't know. I mean, I, for me, again, that's great business strategy, dude. Why not? This is. But basically... do you think it's valid? Do you think that that explosion, that increase of consumption in Japan by more female housewives going out and, and acquiring this, these products is part of the reason they can't now produce aged dated whiskey? I mean, it's, it's a oh, theory, well, right? right? There's no, yeah, there's it's no a theory. There's it's no a data theory, that says, right? but yeah, there's no. Yeah, it's just exactly. another thing that coincides with this spike that right. we're going to look at now. Okay, so I. I I would say I'm cynical about that. I'm I'm I I don't think You're that could be the case. Cynical about most things. That's though. true. I mean, I can't imagine all of these like women at home watching this all of a sudden go out and you know what? I'm gonna go buy some hard liquor 
because I ne I've never drank, you know, I don't drink hard liquor usually, but I saw this thing on TV. I'm going to go buy and, you know, increase the demand like crazy. You don't, crazy. Believe, it. Wait, 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 you don't that believe that that's influence? possible? Are you crazy? Of course that's possible. Have you not heard of like QVC? Have you not heard yes. of the Home Shopping Network? Yes, You're but they're not, buying, they're not buying. They're buying. They're buying. Buying. It doesn't matter what it is. They're People not buying buy whatever's liquor. crammed down oh their throat. Here's my theory. Here's okay. my theory. <laughs> that same year, Japan went to a recession. Japan went into a recession. And what happens in a recession? There's a lot of depression. A lot of depression, a lot of people buy booze. That's my theory. But you also think, lose well, a lot of money. That's not. And you don't necessarily spend it. That can just on be things. one more thing. Exactly. But well, here's booze, the thing, though. We come know. On. Here's, we know. Yeah. That. Product placement works. Absolutely. You know the product okay. placement. Hang on, hang on, let me finish here. Coca-Cola has been doing it forever. And we even know with bourbons, you've been seeing things like Blanton's and John Wick, and Blanton's goes crazy. Mm -hmm. It works. And just because you don't like Japanese housewives or you don't believe that they want to drink, just makes you racist. But you I know... <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Second in. <laughs> But, you know, let me bring this back to the actual question at hand. And, you know, I think a lot of it is, you know, so regarding like the removal of the H statement or like the less dominance of the H statements, I think a lot of it is just the trend in general with um, alcohols. You know, I mean, it's not, again, it's but, not but only... it's only things that have been uh, increased in popularity. And there's, it's yeah, undeniable but that, the, that Japanese, has, Japanese whiskey but my, but my point being, But my point being like, look, so because of also the increase of demand, I think a lot of it too is that they don't need to adhere to those kind of details to the general consumer who they're now targeting. That's right. Right, because uh, no, it's absolutely. one of those where, right, you know, right. the, you know, it's only for like that's the true connoisseur and that's why they're yeah. doing it. Because you know what? It's actually not as important as generating like these exclusives, you know, that are 55 year and at this crazy price no, point. But they make more money off of the general I agree, product they but it, you, the exclusives help push the product brand. Right and its I, value, I know, and man. so it's. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I, I no. personally think that I. Look, I disagree. With you. I, I really think that. I don't know. Was, it's basically like you no. Know. <laughs> I mean, take take Jim Beam. We know okay. a lot about bourbon, right? So yeah. take Jim Beam White Label. The person that goes to the store every week to buy a bottle of Jim Beam, do they care about the Distiller Select two hundred dollar sherry cask Jim Beam that came out a couple years ago? No, but it keeps the brand relevant to the connoisseur. And that's my point. It keeps the brand relevant, and it doesn't even but not even to. The, but you know what? I would even say not even to the connoisseur, because you know what the uh, the fifty five year does? It makes it newsworthy. Okay, and that's, that's why, fair. and that puts yeah. the, the brand in people's minds, regardless of what it is, if it's negative, positive, uh, okay, whatever. Okay, okay, okay. So and there's value in that. So from is, that it, is it like side. is it like when Ford, yeah. you know, competed in Le Mans? Absolutely. You know, it, it, it was it was all about the marketing. It's about and it was one of those where it's sure, about getting the name the out. The challenge there. was to beat Le Mans, but at the same time, they also gained enough by not beating him by proving that even just second place was good enough. Because it put Le Mans on watch. This is America. Right? Second place is never good enough. So <laughs> wow, let's get to the, wow. Wow. Let's get to the final. Uh, you question. know what they say about second place? It's the first loser. Wow. All right. So wow. Let's get Let's get to my final question here. We've talked about some theories. We've talked about this loss of the age statement. So does it matter that we've lost age statements in Japanese whiskey? Are there enough good other choices out there? Are they still making good products? Why are we losing our heads over this? I mean, I've got a couple things to say about this, but you guys can go first. I do too. So I'll start. Um, so, so when they started doing that, I had a very visceral reaction. I felt like I was getting... Did you panic? No, I didn't panic. Well, actually, no, you're right. I panicked and I went out and bought a bunch of Elijah Craig 12 year, 1.5 liter. But that's nothing to do with Japanese whiskey. Okay, well, you cut that. But no, what I'm saying is they were getting rid of age statement for okay, that. Okay, okay. And I, and I, and I panic, went yeah. out and I did yeah. panic in that way. And, and my, my gut reaction was, oh man, they're going to, they're ripping me off somehow. Like I, I am not going to get my money's worth type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, academically, thinking about it again, you know, actually, I don't, at this point, I don't really care. I, I, that's as long the trend as, of as, the as consumers. Long as, yeah. as long as, I, I don't know if the year was actually marketing, mm -hmm. and then we just bought into that, and then we just got used to that, mm -hmm. and therefore, now, you know, it's like, it's like getting something, getting rid of something in our childhood, right? Mm -hmm. And saying, well, we didn't drink in our childhood, I hope. But, but you know, you you know it's, it's about nostalgia. Like, we had numbers when we when we were younger, mm -hmm. but now it's gone and it's like, oh, that's bad. But, you know, if I were to be objective and looked at the flavors and kind of the, the, kind of the repercussion of taking the numbers out, I think we got a lot more. I think we got a lot more variety. I got more interesting experiments. But, so I would say, you know, I, I'm not missing it as much as I thought I was going to. Okay. 
Yeah, no, I, I complete agreement with you on that. I think a lot of it is this is the consumer trend today. You know, it's one of those where people, I don't think people were looking for it or, you know, at least the demand of, you know, having those level of details were just not as high before. And I think it's just them responding to that. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that because, you know, they, you know, obviously they have teams who do this stuff, who study and analyze this thing. And it's one of those where like, you know, they're not, they're not going to remove a number for no reason. Let me throw in a theoretical here. Look, so they remove the H statement. How about like 10 years from now, they bring back the H statement. Now what do you do? I'm going to try it. And you're going to buy it, right? I'm going to buy then it. Then the marketing but... worked, guys. That's exactly why this but strategy if I is prefer, fine. if I prefer one of the ones they brought out now, sure. what will I have been missing? Uh, okay. Well, okay. Right, gonna... but look, you just proved to me that 10 years from now, you would still go buy it. So yeah, they didn't, I, from I their point back. of view, I'm gonna push from back a business a point of view, they didn't look at it. man. Yeah, we're in unique cases. We're going to buy whatever they want. But I think my point being, like, look, if the demand is still there and, like, they're able to sell this product, look, it... They wouldn't be selling any of this stuff if it didn't work, is my point. Look, I'm going to push back on that. There are a couple of Japanese distilleries, like the newer ones, that are actually selling it in the beginning with actual age statements yeah, yeah. in order to get... But it's like eight year, nine years. Nine right, eight, nine. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some I've seen that are like 10 to 10 12. Now. And I feel like, yeah, they're doing it so that they can get out there. Yeah. And, and, because, and they're taking there. advantage of the fact that the other big distilleries have taken that number off. Right. So... But that doesn't necessarily translate to a better product or a more delicious product just because of the age. The oh, age isn't everything. I'm not talking about the product. Okay, so I'm talking I, about from the marketing and I sales I actually think point. we all agree, though. At the end yeah. of the day, like, it's not that big a deal. They're still putting out good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. right. Should yeah. we, we? I don't think we, at least we don't care that much. And you know what? Also, it doesn't, strain, it doesn't like hold them back. You know what I mean? Because it's one of those where, like, now they can dabble in all these other different things yeah. and, you know, not but, I mean, be held I, I accountable think to it. For the, <laughs> the true Japanese whiskey aficionado that's crazy about it and they loved getting, like, the 17, 18 year old ones, they're really, they're probably going to be missing out on that. Like, could you imagine, like, if, you know, Elijah Craig stopped releasing the 18 and 23 year old or, like, mm -hmm. Happy stopped releasing the 15, 15 and the 20, 20 year old because, yeah. oh, you know, not enough to. You know, it, yeah. like there are people that love that stuff are really, it's going to be sad. <laughs> and what's going to replace it? Yeah, le, so let me... Oh, so I, for the really old stuff, I, I think there is a legit argument. But maybe for like the 12-year-olds, I think there's decent stuff to replace so, those. So, but. so I know Dutch goes crazy over the Pappy because he loves Pappy. Who doesn't? Would you buy Pappy if they Go took the away planet? the age statement? I would love to try it, honestly. Right? I'm really you curious. They just call it Pappy Van Winkle. You mean William LaRue Weller, the BTAC? Ah, that's true. That's hmm. true. It's kind of already out there, man. That's true. That's true. All right, guys. Yeah. I think this has been very illuminating. I think we covered a lot of interesting stuff about Japanese whiskey. We've really satisfied some curiosities, don't you think? That's true. <laughs> All right. Let's go to part two. All right, guys. What have we been drinking? While we're discussing all this Japanese whiskey, of course. I don't know. Of course. What have we been drinking? You guys know. It's it's some Japanese whiskey. Ooh, very uh, nice. So we've been drinking the Nika Pure Malt. It's actually called the Takatsuru Pure Malt. Named after? Takatsuru. Masataka Takatsuru, who we were the talking about. The founder himself. The founder himself. Uh, all this right. This was made as like this kind of homage to him and his love of whiskey. And it was designed, I think... To be able to appeal to both kind of sophisticated connoisseurs and to newcomers to Japanese whiskey. Mm. So it's, mm. it, I think it does a good job of that. Mm. Just jumping right to it. Just jumping right to it. I mean, like, I, I really enjoy I mean, this. I, I, this was a really enjoyable. This is yeah, enjoyable. we've been, we've been mm. sipping on this while we were talking about this, and I got to say, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I, you know, we're doing this because, you know, we're not, we don't, we don't want to review this. It's a, it's a different it's, it's a different thing. Or maybe right? we do, but... Well, I mean, oh, we can no, talk no. kind of just generally yeah. about it. I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, I'm really enjoying this while we're having this discussion. I think it's yeah, a perfect... It's, it's a perfect sipping uh, uh, whiskey. Yeah. And it's very elegant. I was initially worried that because the proof is low. Yeah. But... For what I get, I mean the the, the complexity and the balance. Yeah. Wow, that's my thing. And this, the, what reminded me as soon as you know when I started drinking it was like uh, it's just the uh, refinement of it, and then the flavors again. It's, it's just because it's it's crazy seamless. how much they're pulling out. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know why it's great so awesome is, is imagine the three of us were at a bar, we wanted to order something and just have a good conversation like we just were, and we didn't have to focus super hard on this. Yeah, and we didn't want it to get in the way, but we wanted it to blend perfectly with the it, this. 
does that. Yeah, like, it is so really well. It's yeah. perfect. So and then if you want to spend the time and analyze it, there's a lot. There's there a lot too. going on. Yeah, there's absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, great. it's a perfect amount of peat, mm-hmm. perfect amount of sweetness, a perfect amount of that balance. The finish is extremely long. Oh yeah. And it's not really harsh at all. I think the they they you know I again I prefer higher proof. You know, full disclosure, but. I There's think, a lot going on. For yeah, for our discussion for, for right now, I, I'm really enjoying this. Great product. Um, pretty easy to find. You might have to yeah. look a little bit, but I mean, I found this in a grocery store for 80 bucks. And they're available at restaurants. I've yeah, seen it on I've, the menu. I've, yeah, I've actually like, found it very low priced in restaurants. Yeah, as low yeah. as like 12, 15 bucks a pour for yeah. a two ounce pour, which is, I think, amazing. It's, yeah. yeah. I, love um, with, uh, rich, I love this with rich pasta. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Can you shave really trouble on that pasta for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right fun. guys uh, it's been some great conversation jules takes out yeah keep the conversation going guys in the comments below hit that uh, thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe for more videos from curiosity public and we'll see ya stay curious